Papa's home with his menthols and milk, boys. Coming at you live from Purity Vanilla. This one has been a long time in the making. Purity Vanilla has been going strong for over two years now. And even on a server that boasts completely vanilla gameplay, two years is plenty of time for a totem pole of unique, coveted items to establish itself in the default boundaries of Minecraft. Whether you're a diehard collector on the Purity Vanilla server or just interested in what kinds of limited valuables stand out in organic gameplay, I tracked down and laid out the hierarchy as I see it. Also, I'm excluding illegals that mods or admins may or may not have because they're inaccessible to the public player base. Every one of these items you could hypothetically get your hands on without deletion from the server's owner, Penguin. Actually, speaking of Penguin, before we get on with our list, I'm really stoked to finally publish an exclusive message from the server owner himself made specially for this video. Hello, it is me, Penguin, the owner of the Purity Vanilla Minecraft server. I wanted to remind you to check and make sure you are subscribed to a person. If you are not, I will IP ban you and delete your e Just hit the subscribe button now. Easy ban, cope, hard, new facts. Thank you, Penguin. I appreciate that. You heard the man. I'm Apersu, and these are the top 10 rarest items on Purity Vanilla. The 10th rarest item on Purity Vanilla isn't even technically vanilla. One of the most consistent complaints from people who first joined Purity is the fact that there's a voting system in place. How the heck is this vanilla? This is not vanilla. Voting Although, if you take more than a quick glance, you'll notice you need a lot of votes to garner some of the more luxurious one-time items. These being the Purity Elytra and the Purity Trident. By the time you've hit these vote numbers in-game, you've already gotten yourself both of these items naturally. The only difference between these items and the common ones on the server are the neat little descriptions on each. The Elytra has a little nod toward the voting system, and the Trident points to some old server lore. Elytras and Tridents are fairly common on Purity, but if you, limited to 5 votes a day, manage to hit 300 votes, that's 60 straight days of voting, and then 500 being 100 straight days of voting, you've got yourself some pretty unique items. <laughs> The map art community on Purity Vanilla is pretty active. As you can see, there are plenty of creators putting in hours upon hours into their craft. Map art is fairly easy to obtain through the map art trading hub on Discord, but these definitely won't be items that you just come across. And as uncommon as many of these are, there are some map arts that haven't been mass produced. Unfortunately, there's no one sole widely known rare map art to put here, but for example, players Malty and Sam QC created map arts of PvP tournament participants' names, one for each player, never to be mass produced. There are even some map arts so rare and harbored in secret that some collectors I've spoken with won't even describe them to me. The reason this entry isn't higher on the list is because it's not impossible that a quote rare map art hasn't been mass produced and is sitting in one person's e-chest. I may do a video on just purity map art one day, but for now, map art in general sits comfortably at number 9. <laughs> A kind of rite of passage for any Anarchy server is the World Seed being cracked and leaked. This has happened to Purity on three different occasions, and the seed has been switched around every time. An unfortunate side effect of this switch around is treasure maps becoming disabled. Treasure maps were being generated in shipwrecks, but many of the chunks they led to no longer existed due to the seed switch. This was actually somehow leading to server crashes. The server owner Penguin disabled them, figuring it wasn't worth the hassle. Meaning now, although hidden chests are still generating and can be found with some random chance and pretty good luck, the treasure maps that typically lead to them are no longer spawning in shipwrecks and are being replaced by empty maps, making there a finite amount of them on the server. 
woodland mansion maps do fall under the same paradigm, although far more uncommon and more frequently sought after. And hold on, we've got a quick addition to this entry. We have the Ocean Monument map. I didn't even know this thing fucking existed until like halfway through editing this video. Ocean Monument maps obtained from villagers just like the Woodland Mansion maps are currently one of the rarest items on the server. The first one to have ever been publicly traded on Purity was traded just last week. Its rarity stems from the same reasons as the other maps, their generation has been disabled. To put it in perspective, a buried treasure map will usually fetch around 1 to 3 ingots. A woodland mansion map you'll see anywhere from like 5 to 15. The ocean monument map, however, fetches over 64 netherite ingots. Right now, this is actually one of the rarest items on the server, but the fact they can be copied and reproduced stops me from giving it a higher entry. Much earlier on in Purity, there was a fun plugin that didn't alter the vanilla gameplay, but produced some additional in-game items to fuck around with. Purity Vanilla once allowed for player heads to be dropped when a player was killed. As to be expected, on a pseudo-anarchy server, a fun novelty quickly turned into a headache for the server's owner around Halloween of 2020. As Purity player Warlock Funny Number, along with his new faction Gardenia, discovered a duping exploit using player heads and shulker boxes that required server rollback. Due to the embedded code of player heads, the exploit was not and is not patchable, so Penguin disabled them altogether. Though player heads that were already generated during the plugin's lifespan are still available and are quickly becoming some of the most sought after items on Purity. Just stole some of my grandma's perks and now she got mad. Killed the orphan's parents and now he's sad. The value of a customized item is another one of those subjectively valued items, making it tough to fit into a top 10 list. There are many, many players who collect unique signed books, whether from notable players or not, but there's also a majority of players who really just don't give a shit. So, as a balance in objectivity and subjectivity, it's safe to say that a book signed by a Purity staff member is pretty valuable and falls into the number 6 spot. Over the years, staff has come and gone, some willing to sign every book tossed their way, and some who are a lot more reserved, like Eulogy Singer, who burned a book in Quill I paid a fucking ingot for. I could do a rare book top 10 on Purity sometime, but for the sake of keeping this brief, a book signed by staff or even the server owner Penguin himself is going to be something a lot of people want to get their hands on. Penguin is still active in the community, but rarely logs into Purity, so a Penguin book is definitely a relic a lot of collectors seek out. If you're new to Purity and don't know which players are worth getting signed books from, check the wiki as the most noteworthy players and staff are listed there. Where the mask is, that's what the point of the mask is. On March 23rd, 2021, exactly two years after Purity's launch, Penguin decided to celebrate with the addition of a special in-game item called the Two-Year Cake. It's a regular Minecraft cake, but is named in a way that can't be replicated by any other players but an admin. Penguin held an event near spawn where he dropped them for attendees. It was meant to be one per player, but several managed to get away with multiple because of how crowded the area was. It's estimated roughly around 30 players attended the event, and with some lucky players sneaking off with multiple, there were likely around 80 to 100 two-year cakes total in purity. The majority of these are stored away in e-chests, and in the rare occasion one is traded, it typically comes with a very high price tag. I suck his dick with a smile for hours at a time. Stare at his nuts. A neat feature on Purity is the ability to color and stylize the names of your items with an anvil if you've donated enough to the server. All in all, I think this was a great addition to Purity. Items with colored and stylized names have no effect on the vanilla gameplay, but serve as a fun way to stylize your experience. This was the case even in the early days of Purity, and was innocent enough until the 1.16 update rolled around. 
The plugin that Penguin used, which allowed for color coding items, came with a little bit of broken code in the fresh update. If you type that broken code into the nameplate of your item, you could exceed the character limit by a pretty staggering amount. This meant you'd walk away with a very lengthy and really fucking obnoxious item name. The spam name feature was only exploitable for about an hour and a half. Despite the small window of opportunity, a handful of players managed to hop on the train before Penguin brought it to a stop. Although extremely rare, you still see some spam swords pop up in chat here and there, which serve as warm reminders that, oh yeah, that was a thing. Friday, Friday, get down on John Madden. Da, 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 da. Purity Vanilla has seen four major Minecraft updates, and this is a large faculty of Purity's appeal. The server admins do their best to make sure the server runs with each update, which is an anomaly for even pseudo-anarchy servers, as the majority of them tend to remain on the 1.12.2 update. In 2019, back when Purity was on the 1.14 version of Minecraft, a vanilla 114 feature allowed players to put Curse of Vanishing on pumpkins. Not carved pumpkins, just pumpkins, the vegetables. But 115 rolled around on December 10th, 2019, and with it came Mo Yang's amendment to Curse of Vanishing. The enchantment could no longer be applied to pumpkins, but only carved pumpkins instead, as is the case today. And in the nine months it was possible to enchant a pumpkin alone with Curse of Vanishing, to the public's knowledge, only one player was fucking bored enough to do it. Purity player Bitlet enchanted about 20 pumpkins before it became impossible with the update. Remember, no one could have anticipated they'd become novelties, so taking the time to put a vanishing enchantment on a vegetable wasn't on anyone's to-do list, except for this one guy. He also had Curse of Binding Pumpkins, but they disappeared from his inventory one day, likely as a result of Penguin trying to patch out illegal items. But the Curse of Vanishing Pumpkins still remain. Although player heads in general sit at the number 7 spot, there is an enormous distinction between the head of a no-name player and the head of a noteworthy player. When any active player on Purity thinks rare, they think of a noteworthy player head. So the second rarest item on Purity Vanilla is going to be any uncommon staff member's head or any notable player's head that not many copies exist of. For example, there is a head that exists of Sal C1, a 2B2T YouTuber with over 600,000 subscribers. Then there's the Jerocraft head. Jerocraft is a YouTuber with 1.75 million subscribers. He's the guy that made that transforming a subscriber's Minecraft world after being scammed on Fiverr video. Three of his heads exist on the server as he was active on Purity for a short while, and two were owned by player Snakehob, as shown here. There are some popular Purity-specific players, such as Deka Deka, who fall into this category as well, as not many of his head exists, and what he's done for his faction and the server itself are ingrained in Purity's history. The Holy Grails, though, would most likely be mod heads. Urk, Rich, and especially old mods like Nuns, Dug One, Anyone in positions of power are immediately extremely valuable collectibles. And as well as these, Purity players Sush and Kaudimora have access to B heads, and player OO has access to a Ravager head. These heads dropped from the mobs themselves as a result of a quickly patched bug in the player head plugin. I've seen heads like these and the aforementioned noteworthy heads traded for decent chunks of real life money and they only continue to grow in value as time goes on. Before the number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Myself, actually, and now retired player MS Lucifer technically do own some of the rarest heads on the server. They're my head and Lucifer's head each with a special description provided by Penguin that no other player can replicate. 
To this day, these are the only player heads to be spawned into Purity after the plugin was originally disabled, and the only heads on the server with additional descriptions under them. Lucifer and I were commissioned by the server owner to put together an official trailer for Purity Vanilla after we released our first video, The Philosophy of Purity. So Penguin graciously hooked us up as a thank you for the trailer. It's pretty fucking sick. When Purity Vanilla's first anniversary came around, Penguin held a hardcore PvP event on a separate server as a means to celebrate and to give away some items. There was one holy grail that everyone was aiming for, and we'll get to that in a minute, but the runner-up prizes hold just about as much reverence. Like you can see here, the second place participant, who was Chadlet's member, Show Me Potato Salad, received the Victory Trident. Third place, who was Stornwald, received the Victory Elytra. The player with the most playtime, who also happened to be Stornwald, received the Victory Sword. These are one-of-a-kind, specially tagged items that cannot be replicated. I can't even imagine the price they'd go for. Our final honorable mention before the number one spot is the touch of a woman. Number one, the dragon egg. Yep, you guessed it. I didn't want to have such a predictable number one, but anything else here would be disingenuous. As purity doesn't allow duping like other low to no rule servers, the dragon egg obtained by killing the ender dragon has remained a one of one item, and the history surrounding the egg goes deep. I'm not going to bother going into a comprehensive history lesson like Glaceon Guy did here, you can check his video out right there, but I'll deliver an abridged version. The egg was first obtained by player Feo. But after he fell into the void and rage quit the server, Penguin removed the egg from his e-chest considering its value. From there, it jumped possession until a player who owned it was banned. Penguin had to pull the egg from the banned player's e-chest, and he held a hardcore PvP event for the server's first anniversary, to determine the egg's next owner. The player who came out on top, and who still to this day owns the dragon egg, was Ragster Inja. He's been offered up to $600 USD for it, but hasn't budged. Confident in his PvP skills, he's held the egg out in the open at spawn, but no one has ever made a legitimate attempt at taking it from him. Regardless, whoever the egg falls into the hands of, it is and always will be Purity Vanilla's most coveted item. I have been working on this thing for months. This shit would not have happened without these fucking awesome people. Every single one of them provided me with a ton of helpful information, and I owe each of them a lot. If you see them in-game, throw some ingots their way or something. With that said, Apersu, signing off. Subscribe!